Have you ever played a video game so much growing up that every single sound in that game was completely lodged into your brain so that if you heard the slightest indication of any of those sounds like a door opening, you were immediately put right back into that place. That for me was GoldenEye 007 on the N64 and it sounds like this. <laughs> That's the sound. That's the sound right there. Oh man, so many great things. So the video game, of course, is from 1997, whereas the GoldenEye movie itself is from 1995. And it is just a glorious combination of corny 90s synthesizer sounds. Now, I don't know if any of you had this same experience, but I never saw the movie before I played the video game. I played the video game for years before I ever actually sat down and watched GoldenEye. Now, the music from the film sounds a little bit different. And in case you don't remember, that sounds like this. <laughs> I always thought the, uh, the sleigh bells was like an interesting addition here. <laughs> the industrial pipe hit off in the background, that's the classic sound. So many things just come rushing back to memory of the sounds. Basically every bad guy sound you could imagine, as well as the bullet hit sounds just, I don't even know what they were supposed to sound like, but they didn't sound like bullet hits. <laughs> You get some good ones like, oh, oh, yeah. You can judge my bad guy sound recreation for yourself. But things like doors opening. Oh, I haven't even looked up the sound effects yet. Let me see if I'm right. But that's the sound of the door. D flat. When the door in the facility opens, I'm pretty sure it's a D flat. Let's find out. Oh, I was oh. a half step off. It's a D, but I was close, and that's how much these sounds become ingrained. Brings back so many memories. Hey, don't forget we are running our holiday sale and you can get massive discounts on all of our products. You can get individual courses for 50% off, bundles for 99 bucks, it's like 60 something percent off, or you can get everything we have available on the Academy for 70% off. There's a link in the description. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. This goes pretty hard, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, we can hear the theme in the background there. Woo, listen to the bass line there. You can really see how they uh, they had to adapt a lot of the themes to what would work in the game, and it sounds like this. Very clearly, synthesizer, fake, you know, fake trumpet sounds, fake everything. They're going with E minor here. Maybe I'm biased because I grew up playing it, but that sounds super good. Hey, we actually have a, a super cool surprise for you guys. We've put together a 19 page condensed score of the original James Bond theme. If you want to download that, it's completely for free. There's a link down in the description below. It's really cool because you can get to see some of the lines, some of the, the iconic lines in the trumpets, but then also you can see like some of the counter melodies and the trombones and stuff. It's really neat. You can see all the different components that went into making the score. It's completely for free. Just use the link down in the description below and we will send it straight to your inbox. And of course, the James Bond theme, the thing that we're all familiar with, was written by Monty Norman back in the 60s. And he actually collected royalties on that from 1962 until his very recent passing in 2022. Of course, the other arranger, composer, who is well known with the Bond franchise is of course John Barry. And John Barry actually composed the soundtracks for 11 of the Bond films. The GoldenEye score was actually composed and performed by Eric Serra. Don't know if I'm saying that right, apologies if I'm not. But it was actually pretty widely criticized at the time in the mid-90s for having absolutely no connection at all to the franchise's history. Which, I don't think that's really a fair judgment, but a lot of people didn't really like it. With it even being called more appropriate for a ride on an elevator rather than a ride on a roller coaster. And in 1997, Graham Norgate and Grant Kirkhope were responsible for converting what was the music for the film to this totally new construction for the video game itself. And while keeping to the spirit of the film, they came up with some pretty interesting things. There it is, there's the sound. The, the golden eye sound. What even is that? It's gotta be like a pipe off in the distance, really echoey, like banging a pipe and then dropping the pitch of it or something? I don't even know. And of course we, we, we stick with this very classic 
Bond sound here. Now, what's funny about this is obviously we're using a pedal tone. We're using, we talk about pedal tones all the time, but it's because they show up everywhere. We're using this E minor sound, right? And then we're just going E minor, sharp five, E minor six, E minor, sharp five. What's another way we could look at that, right? Because you could consider this, well, kind of looks like C major, doesn't it? And then what about this one? What does that look like? Well, that could really easily be A dominant. So we could have a situation here where we're actually the real chords, even though we're not moving the bass, but the implied harmony could sound like this. Everything is the Avengers. Everything. You cannot escape. And what was super cool about the video game is that for every level, they used a slightly different track. So you always were able to, how do you say it, get stuck in the same place every single time on the same level and not have any idea what to do next. And the music is just taunting you over and over and over and over again. And that theme becomes the one thing that you hate in life when you're 12 years old because you can't figure out how to beat the stupid level. Oh my God, the missile train. Oh man, I listened to this for just, hours just like roaming around this train and there was nothing left to do because you'd already failed the mission but it didn't tell you that the failed mission didn't tell you that it just lets you roam around the train and there's like literally nowhere you can go at that point but with each of these levels you can hear that the theme is still in there somewhere we're sticking first of all a lot of it winds up being in e minor and so really the only thing we need to do to make something sound like a bond video game or a movie is to just play with that five sharp five six Sharp five, five. As long as you do that, anything you do is gonna sound like it's from the Bond universe. There it is. Sitting there underneath. It's all you gotta do. Real simple. Now. <laughs> oh man. Why is it that a triangle going ding, 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 ding is always the like the sneaking around sound? You know what I mean? Like it feels like every time there's a scene in a movie where that's the the vibe of it, it's supposed to be this mysterious sneaking thing. Spy movies, you, like you name it. You're gonna hear ding, 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 ding. ding. I don't know, it works. Woo! Oh yeah. A flat minor major seven, but we slide into it. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, and we keep having these like these deep, echoey, far away bangs. That's like the gold. There it is, the golden eye sound. Oh, that sound, yeah. So, I mean, you could clearly hear that the music from the movie and the music from the video game were very, very different from each other. It's very important that video game music be something that can loop very easily and can be listened to for extended periods of time on end when you can't figure out how to complete the level like me. Woo! B minor. Check that out, that's cool. We're just going B minor, G minor. Really nice to make something sound a little bit more spooky maybe and mysterious. Ah, there we go. Hey, so we're taking this theme Check that out. <laughs> Do 
Talk about reworking something to fit into the harmony that you're trying to, and this is really actually a great example of how you can take almost anything and rework it to fit whatever you need it to fit into. And that's what's so great about something as simple as the James Bond theme. We have... I mean, just that right there. How many different ways can you adapt that to so many different things? I mean, obviously... Works in just B minor here, but we could also put it over. Works great over G major with a sharp 11, right? Or... E minor, how about, uh, what else can we do? How about, does it work over C sharp minor? Uh, it's a little harder. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> works over A, but it works everywhere. So when you have something as simple as this, I mean, that's all you're, just those three notes. That's the only thing you're using. You can apply that in so many different ways. And then, if you don't want to use that, you can imply the exact same motion, but when we change this, the notes are not the same, the relationships between the notes are not the same, the intervals are not the same, but yet we know exactly what it is because we've established it first and foremost. We know what's coming next, but then we subvert our expectations by going to a different chord. And then that's totally out of left field and we're not expecting that at all, but we still know what it's representing. We didn't have to play the correct melody in the key of G because you already knew what it was gonna be. And so even when the notes weren't quite the same, we still connected that and said, oh yeah, I know where we are. In the key of G, the correct melody would be, right? Cause imagine going, right? But we don't do that, we go, Totally different ending, but it really works great when we're coming from this B minor place. That's really cool. And you can find this all over the soundtrack to the video game where the themes have been adapted to fit into all kinds of different contexts. All right, there's another one. Right? Imagine what the theme normally is. That's what the theme normally would be in the key of B minor, but instead we do... We're just doing a little bit of an adaptation of it. We're changing the context a bit so it fits into whatever we've constructed for this particular setting. Man, I have not listened to this stuff in a while. It's been so many hours as a kid playing this game. I was never super into video games. In fact, the N64 was kind of the only thing I ever had. Let's just say I didn't have a knack for them. So there's me not having any idea what to do. I was just more interested in the big head cheats. <laughs> oh man, the ridiculous things you could do in GoldenEye. It was just, it was the greatest. Hey, and just a reminder, the holiday sale is going on right now, now through Christmas, you can get massive discounts on all of the products on the Cornell Music Academy. Any single course you wanna buy, 50% off. We got a couple of bundles set up for you guys, the Ultimate Intro Bundle, which you may have seen before, as well as the Improv Essentials Bundle, which you may have seen before as well. Those are gonna be priced right at 99 bucks, and if you guys want to get everything we have available on the Academy, you can do it for one low price, it's 70% off. Use the link down in the description to go check out that sale. It's only going through Christmas, so take advantage of it while it lasts. And that's it. Let me know if you guys played this game as much as I did because, oh man, I spent way too many hours on this game. But it is one of the greatest things that we kept from the 90s. I love it, I'm a huge fan, and I love the movie soundtrack as well. Tell me which one's your favorite in the comments below. That's gonna do it, thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one.